pleasant day to you, grade 8 learners. Are you ready for another fun and active lesson? Join you with me as we learn again the importance of keeping our body, our mind, and our spirit in shape. It's me again, Sir Allen, your PA teacher. I'll be one with you in maintaining your fitness and wellness. So make sure you have your pen and paper ready because we are about to explore the exciting world of physical education here in the Fitness Project. In the previous episode, I asked you to make your own physical activity program. You were also tasked to create a one-minute video of yourself doing the physical activities found in it. I got to watch your videos and it was really hard to choose from all your submitted entries. But today, you will get the chance to see some of the best video entries. So stay tuned and check if your video is included. Enjoy! Excellent work class, all of you did great. Thank you so much to all of you who participated. Now, let us proceed to our exciting topic for today. Are you familiar with these people? What sport do you think they are known for? Yes, you got it right. They are both professional basketball players known for playing the sport basketball. His name is Junmar Fajardo and he is a Filipino player for the San Miguel Beermen of the Philippine Basketball Association. He is known for his nickname, The Kraken, because of his extraordinary size and the finesse against opposing big men. And he is LeBron James, an American player for the Los Angeles Lakers of the National Basketball Association and widely considered as one of the greatest NBA players. Are you interested to know further about basketball? Then you are in the right place because I will be your guide to one of the most popular sports in the world. Let's go! Basketball is everywhere in the Philippines. Go to any street corner of our country, any village, any beach, even a church, you are likely to see a basketball court. Filipinos are very passionate about basketball. In fact, basketball is the most popular sport in the Philippines. Why do you think so? Besides being easy to learn, the sport also fits well in the Philippines because of its strategic and dynamic nature, making the game rewarding for both players and spectators. Filipinos love being entertained and enjoy being kept on the edge of their seats by the game's unpredictable twists. Where does this passion for the game of hoops come from? Find out as we explore this team sport, basketball. Basketball is a team sport, wherein the objective is to shoot a ball through a basket, horizontally positioned to score points while following a set of rules. Usually, two teams of five players play on a marked rectangular court with a basket at each end. A regulation basketball hoop consists of a rim that is 18 inches in diameter and 10 feet high mounted to a backboard. The ball is advanced on the court by bouncing it while dribbling or passing into a teammate. A team can score a field goal by shooting the ball through the basket during regular play. A field goal scores 2 points for the shooting team if a player is touching or closer to the basket than the 3-point line and three points if the player is behind the three-point line. The team with the most points at the end of the game wins, but additional time or what we call overtime may be played when the game ends in a draw. Now, where and where was the game of basketball invented? And how did it turn the popular sport that we know and love? Let's find out! Basketball was built into the fabric of Springfield College. The game was invented by Springfield College instructor and graduate student James Nysmith in 1891 and has grown into the worldwide athletic phenomenon we know it to be today. 
James Naismith was a 31-year-old graduate student. After graduating with a theology degree from Presbyterian College in Montreal, Naismith embraced his love of athletics and headed to Springfield to study physical education. Naismith was required to train young men to become instructors at a newly opened YMCA center. In December 1891, with the cold weather keeping the class indoors, he was asked by the school superintendent of physical education to create an indoor game that would keep the young men active during the cold winter months. Upon this request, Naismith nervously set out to create a game that would focus on skill rather than strength. A game that is easy to assimilate, yet complex enough to be interesting. With the help of his wife and memories of him playing duck on a rock, a game in which players threw rocks at a certain target placed on the top of the large rock, he ended up inventing the game we all know and love today, basketball. On December 21, 1891, Naismith nailed the pitch basket to the lower rail of the balcony. 10 feet off the floor at either end of the gym. He posted a type list of 13 rules on the bulletin board and selected two men to be captains and having nine players on each team. After they chose sides, Naismith tossed a soccer ball up between the two centers. As you can imagine, it was a major pain getting the ball out of the pitch basket when a team finally scored. Some say they used a long pole to push the ball out Others say someone required to climb a ladder to retrieve it. In the first game ever played, there was only one goal scored during the entire game. The game of basketball grew very rapidly, with college teams forming leagues within the first decade of the game's invention. The graduates of the YMCA school traveled across the country and introduced their new game to people in towns and cities across the land. Within three years, basketball started being accepted not just as a fun game to play indoors, but a legitimate sport. Basketball was not confined to the United States. It spread to France and England in 1893, to Germany in 1894, and to Japan in 1900. It became an official Olympic event at the 1936 Berlin Games, which hastened its spread to many other countries. Basketball has come a long way since its creation in 1891 by Dr. James Naismith in Springfield, Massachusetts. It has become a global phenomenon with millions of individuals playing the game. Now that you have learned the game's origin, and before trying your hand at basketball, take the time to learn about these rules, regulations, and mechanics. First, the teams and positions. Five players are assigned to opposing teams, which each team made up of a point guard, a shooting guard, a small forward, a power forward, and a center. Point guards are generally the smallest and the quickest players on the floor, and the primary ball handlers and the facilitators in the offense. Shooting guards and small forwards are the average size players and are commonly referred to as wings. They do a bit of everything such as scoring from the inside and outside, ball distribution and handling, and rebounding. Power forwards and centers are the big men on the court, who primarily score from the interior and are responsible for grabbing the majority of the rebounds. Second, regulation and shot clock. In the National Basketball Association, regulation lasts for four 12-minute quarters. In high school basketball, each quarter lasts for 8 minutes. And in college basketball, team plays for two 20-minute halves. If the score is tied at the end of the regulation period, continuous overtime periods are played until a winner can be determined. An overtime period lasts for 4 minutes in high school basketball. Lastly, there is no shot clock in high school. Overall, the court is 94 feet long and 50 feet wide. In high school basketball, the three-foot arc is 19 feet, 9 inches away. The free throw line is 15 feet away from the basket. Fouls Personal fouls occur when defenders make illegal contact with their opponents. If an opponent is in the act of shooting, 
free throws are awarded. In high school and college, five personal false warrant and ejection. While professionals may commit six fouls before being disqualified. Technical fouls generally occur when a player behaves with an sportsman-like conduct. Scoring Each basket made inside the three-point line is awarded two points. Baskets from behind this line are awarded three points. You also have received one point for each mid-free throw taken without interference from the free throw line. If you are fouled in the act of shooting from two-point range, you will receive two free throws. If you are fouled when shooting beyond the three-point line, you will receive three free throws. If you make the basket while being fouled simultaneously, that basket will count and you will receive one free throw. Next, dribbling mechanics. Dribbling is bouncing the ball with one hand while walking, running, or standing in one spot. The proper mechanics for dribbling a basketball require that you keep the ball low and close to your body in order to make it as difficult as possible for the defender to steal the ball. Spread your fingers out wide and attempt to dribble with just your fingertips for greater control. Once you pick up your dribble, you are allowed two steps and are not allowed to dribble again. Taking more than two steps will result in a traveling violation, while dribbling again will result in a double dribble. The consequence of each offense is that the opposing team will be awarded possession. Lastly, shooting mechanics. To properly shoot a basketball, have your feet shoulder width apart and pointing directly towards the basket. What you have learned today about basketball are some reasons why basketball has taken off the way it did. Its accessibility is a real key to why so many people play it. It also suits the life of Filipino teenagers well and is easy to learn but hard to master. Its strategic and dynamic nature makes the game rewarding for both players and spectators. To Filipinos, basketball is a way of life. To assess what you have learned from today's topic, let's have a quiz. Get your pen and paper ready and let's begin. Read each statement carefully. Fill in the missing letters to answer each question. Number one, this is a team sport wherein the objective is to shoot a ball through a basket horizontally positioned to score points while following a set of rules. Number two, he is known as the inventor of basketball. Number three, this happens when the score is tied at the end of the regulation period to determine the winning team. Number four, it occurs when defenders make illegal contact with their opponents. And number five, it is called bouncing the ball with one hand while walking, running, or standing in one spot. Great job, kids! Give yourself a thumbs up if you got all the correct answers. If not, don't worry. Try to go back your self-learning modules and review the learning task. Did you enjoy our lesson? I hope you had an amazing time learning the brief history of basketball. Stay with us in the next episodes where we will learn the fundamentals and techniques in playing basketball. So make sure you keep on watching. This has been your Sir Allen saying commit to be fit in the fitness project. Good day, World Changers! I am your health aid teacher, Teacher Mary Ann of Lehan, and I'll be helping you to learn, understand, and enjoy while it's the comfort of your home. Here in Health Education! Health Education for a Healthier Nation.
last learning week, we have learned the importance of family on your sexuality. We have realized that our family plays an important role on how we shape our sexuality since our first social interaction takes place with them. Our family as well should be the source of love and acceptance that a child needs for her or his growth and development as a human being. And for today's episode, we will explore the issues and concerns that you experience as an adolescent. Are you excited about that? If yes, let's wash our hands, cleanse our minds, and recharge our souls. Go, get your module, ball pen, and notebook so that we can begin. During your childhood, you probably did not doubt most of your thoughts and feelings about yourself. But when you reach adolescence, you somehow started to ask some things about you in relation to the changes that are happening in your body. Trying to figure out who you are and how you express yourself as somewhat scary but exciting at the same time. Don't you worry because teenage is a fundamental stage of life that each human being passes through. I did too. Some people face this period of their life actively and positively, while others face dilemmas and difficulties. As you grow older, you will discover a lot about yourself, your sexuality, your gender preferences, and your sexual behavior, which we discussed in the previous episode. Do you still remember Soji? Then, let's have a quick review for that. Ang soji o sexual orientation, gender identity, and expression. Tinatalakay natin ito dahil pumapatungkol ito sa ating mga sariling pagkilala, sa ating sekswalidad at kasarian. Una, ang sexual orientation. Sinasagot nito ang tanong na, batay sa kasarian, kanino ka ba nagkakagusto? Kung lalaki sa lalaki, yan po ay paiging gay o bakla. Kung babae sa babae naman ay pagiging lesbian o tomboy. Kapag babae sa lalaki o lalaki sa babae, ikaw ay straight o heteroseksual. Maaari ding lahat ng kasarian ay nagugustuhan mo. Ikaw ay maaaring maging bisexual. At maaari ding wala kang nagugustuhan. Ikaw ay maaaring maging asexual o ace. Ikalawa naman ang gender identity. Sinasagot nito ang tanong na, paano mo kinikilala ang iyong sariling kasarian? Maaaring ikaw ay pinanganak at lumaki nang kinikilala mo ang iyong kasarian batay sa iyong sex assigned at birth. Therefore, ikaw ay cisgender na individual. Mayroon ding mga individual na nagtransition tungo sa kaibang kasarian. Halimbawa, pinanganak na male ngunit mas nakilala ang sarili bilang babae. Sila ay mga transgender women o trans women. Mayroon ding pinanganak na female pero mas nakilala ang sarili bilang mga lalaki. Sila naman ay mga transgender men o trans men. Mayroon ding mga individual na hindi nagpapakahon sa mga kategorisasyon ng kasarian at sila ay mas nakikilala natin bilang mga gender queer na mga individual. Ang gender expression naman ay sumasagot sa tanong na paano mo ba pinapahayag ang iyong kasarian? Maaari kang maging masculine, feminine, androgynous o queer. Ito ang mga pagpapahayag ng isang tao. Pero depende na din kung anong expression ang komportable para sa kanya. As you go along with your life, you become curious and inquisitive resulting in some issues and concern that need to be addressed. One of the most common teenage concerns nowadays that is related to what we have discussed from the past weeks is identity crisis. So let's talk about identity crisis. Developmental psychologist and psychoanalyst Eric Erikson first used the term identity crisis. He introduced the ideas of adolescent identity crisis as well as midlife crisis believing that resolving crisis in life develops personalities. If you are experiencing this, you may be questioning your sense of self or identity. This can often occur because of big changes and or stressors in life due to factors such as age or advancement from a certain phase like in school or in childhood. Here is what you need to know about identity crisis since your age right now is in the stage where you try to find out exactly who you are through an intense exploration of personal values, beliefs, and goals. Join me as we listen to our health expert of the day. 
kung hindi mo alam ang katungkulan mo sa buhay o hindi mo kilala ang sarili mo kung sino ikaw, mukhang nakakaranas ka ng krisis sa identidad o identity crisis. Una, ano ba ang identity? Ito yung naglalarawan sa atin. Kasama dito yung ating paniniwala, mga pinapahalagan sa buhay, at ating personalidad. Ano naman yung identity crisis? Nagsimula ang konseptong ito kay Professor Eric Erickson, isang psikolohikal ng pagunlad. Naniwala siya na ang pagbubuo natin ng ating identity ay isa sa mga importanteng bahagi sa buhay ng tao. At ito ay nabubuo sa panahon ng tayo ay nagdadalaga o nagbibinata. Ang gender identity ay iba sa gender expression. Ang gender expression ay kung paano natin pinapakita o pinapakilala ang ating sarili sa ibang tao o sa mundo. Halimbawa, kung gusto mo makilala na babae ka, ikaw ay nagsusuot ng saya o damit. Ang gender identity ay iba din sa orientasyon sa sekswal. Ang orientasyon sa sekswal ay nagpapatukoy sa tipo ng tao kung saan siya nagkakagusto o sexually attracted. Kung bakit sa panahon ng puberty, ito ay nangyari dahil ito ang panahon na mabilis ang pagbabago ng physical o katawan na anyo ng lalaki o babae. Dito din ang epekto ng mga hormones, emosyon, at ang pag-iisip ng ating kakayahan sa ating uh, kinabukasan. Anong epekto nito sa kabataan? Pwede magkaroon ng depresyon, walang focus sa buhay, madalas magulo ang pakipagrelasyon, at may problema sa pagtitiwala sa sarili, sa kapwa, sa kaibigan, at saka sa pamilya. Ano ang kailangang bantayan upang maiwasan ang paghantong nito sa kondisyon sa kalusugang pagkaisipan? At ano ang pwedeng gawin? Importante yung maalagaan natin ang ating identity. Dito tayo nakikilala ng ibang tao. Ito yung pwedeng maging daan sa buhay natin na maging matibay, masaya, kontento at iba pa. Walang natatanging paraan para maiwasan ang identity crisis. Pero may mga paraan para ito ay ngayusin, gamutin at matulungan ang tao. Una, dapat kilalanin ang sarili niya. Know yourself or self-awareness. Pangalawa, subukang mag-isip at gumawa ng mga pangangkop sa stress or coping skills. Pangatlo, maghanap ng suporta sa mga pinagkakatiwalaan na tao, kaibigan at pamilya. O pwede din sa grupo ng mga kabataan na may kaparehong sitwasyon o peer support. Pangapat, humingi ng tulong sa mga mental health professional, sa doktor o psychiatrist o sa psychologist para sa psychotherapy. Panglima, huwag mawala ng pag-asa na umayos din ang buhay dahil hindi mo ito kasalanan at hindi ka nag-iisa sa sitwasyon mo. Thank you so much. Without a doubt, it is completely normal to question who you are, especially because we experience changes throughout our lives. However, we have to note if the crisis begins to affect your daily thinking or functioning because any type of crisis can also result in decline in your mental health. If you or someone you know experience any signs of depression, you should consider seeking help immediately, especially if thoughts about hurting oneself occurs because of the crisis. Questioning your sense of self may be stressful, but it can actually be a good thing in the long term. You will know yourself better, your decisions, choices, and perspective in life. You can adapt as well to the demands and changes of tomorrow that will mold you to have confidence, grit, and grace. Let us not forget that life has no deadlines, just like your sexuality. Discovering who you are and what you want to be is a lifelong journey of adventure and experiment through our inner self. Do not pressure anyone, including yourself, about any of this. Instead, support and help them as they navigate their journey in knowing their own identity. Once again, for more Health Aid lessons, I am your Health Aid teacher, Teacher Mary Ann Oblihan, always at your service. I hope to see you again here in Health Education! Health Education for a Healthier Nation!